all four of y'all. <laughs> oh, it, it is good to have you here. Um, I know that with, oh, I'm sorry, I got used to wearing a mask. So. I know that um, with all that's going on and, and this being Father's Day, these are difficult times. But I'm glad that you're here. Um, and, and there's really not much to announce because, again, we're in the middle of difficult times. I know that line dancing is meeting up again. Um, and then also, we are starting Zumba classes here. And, um, and there's information about that coming up, but I don't know exactly what they are, to be honest. Um, I think Mondays and Thursday evenings. Mondays and Thursday evenings, there's Zumba class. Uh, social distancing will be done in these classes, just as they are done in line dancing. As a matter of fact, when I went to the line dancing class, everybody except for Pam over there was social distancing. <laughs> but, but that's good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I just told everyone on the internet, Pam, on you. But brothers and sisters, let us open our um, hearts towards it. Amen? Amen. Shows us the way. We, we are, are not afraid. afraid. 
love walks with us. Therefore, speak out against oppression and suffering, even if that means losing friends who will not see. We are not afraid. Love walks with us. Therefore, defend the poor, feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, even when the crowd cries, they should help themselves. We are not afraid. Love walks with us. Therefore, visit the lonely and comfort the sick, even when there will be, be those who think who thank us and those who curse us. We are not afraid. Love walks with us. We are the hands and feet of God. The light of love shows us the way. We are not afraid. Love walks with us. Our hymn this morning is Come I Hear My Lord. <laughs> Things happening, 
and that you were going to go on a special dinner today or have a special lunch or have a barbecue, as in the bird barbecue, that not the southern noun barbecue, but a cookout. And, um, and it's going to be a wonderful day. Regardless of what kind of day you're having on this Father's Day, know that we celebrate with one another, but we also mourn with one another. Amen? So, so why don't we do this? Why don't we go to God in prayer, in silence, be thankful for those people in our lives who fathered us and mentored us and led us, and also mourn for those who've lost something. So let us go to God in prayer.
Wow, nothing says Father's Day like that passage, huh? <laughs> I remember, it's funny because that passage actually came up on Father's Day six years ago. Do you remember the sermon? Yeah, yeah right? It, it wasn't that good, actually. And I can remember, I was telling myself, if it ever falls on Father's Day again, I'm going to have a better sermon. And um, we will see. We will see. Y'all can smile a little more, right? <laughs> but nothing says Father's Day like the passage Justin read, but it does speak to the reality of being a parent. How when you do the right thing, it is sometimes met with resistance. Have you ever been there? I'll give you an example. My dad used to make me clean my room every morning. And, and not only did the room have to be clean, the bed had to be military tucked. Do you know what I mean by military tuck? That, that the back sheet had to go underneath, then the side sheet had to go underneath, and be tight enough to be able to bounce a quarter on. That was the expectation in the household. Now the problem was, I believed that the space, my bedroom, was my room. And I should be able to do in my room what I want to do in my room. And if I didn't want to clean it up, so be it. And therefore, we would argue all the time after breakfast, boy, is the room clean? Nope. Why isn't it clean? It's my room. <coughs> And then we would argue and argue and argue. In hindsight, I realized what he was trying to do. 
He was trying to raise me right. Trying to instill responsibility. Trying to teach me how to be disciplined. But I wanted nothing to do with it and he was frustrated by it. Parents, have you ever been there? I'm going to nod your head. He was frustrated by it. Sometimes almost gave up because of the resistance. So, so let's expand on that thinking. Have you ever been in a place where you are doing the right thing? Where you are where, where being taking a stand for justice, helping someone in need, looking out for your neighbor, only to be criticized for it? Here are things like you shouldn't be doing that. Or you're not doing it right. Or why did you do that instead of this? Making you almost wish you never did what you did in the first place. Church, have you ever been there? Saw this poet. Saw this quote by a poet named B. Divine. I don't think that's her given name. I think it's a very clever name now. Be divine. It said, it is, sad, it is a sad world indeed when a well-intentioned act of kindness can I go undisturbed by petty criticism or hateful words fueled by ignorance. In the passage, Jesus says, do not think that I've come to bring peace on earth. I've come to bring a sword I've come to bring a sword. Jesus wasn't talking about a violent revolution. He wasn't talking about creating a war. That would counter the code that he was living by. A life of grace, a life of compassion, and a life of love. A life that we all know that he lived. Jesus was speaking to a reality that when you take a stand, someone will not like it. It may even be a close friend. And that division can cut like a sword. See how that works? That's what Jesus meant when he talked about bringing a sword. A division can cut. That when you speak out, someone will speak out against you. It may even be someone you love, like a parent. And the hostilities between you two will be harsh. That when you rise to seek justice, Someone will try to put you down. A large group may rise against you. There may be crowds who disagree with you. You ever been in front of a crowd that disagrees with you? Yeah, try preaching. <laughs> <laughs> and the black and the backlash can be unrelenting. And in the time Jesus lived, it may literally cost you your life. And so Jesus says, take up the cross. Because brothers and sisters, following in the ways of Jesus is not just about being a good person and believing in the right things. It means taking a stand to make things right. And for some of us, it means finding the strength to overcome our fears and not be intimidated by haters. It means speaking out and being a voice of change. And for some of us, it means finding a way to overlook our doubts. To overlook our doubts and not be paralyzed by what ifs. Have you ever been paralyzed by a what if? What if people complain? Oh, what if people don't like it? What if it strains our relationship? What if? It means rising against injustice to help your neighbor. And for some of us, it means finding the courage to face adversity and not run from it. And when Jesus says, do not be afraid, he wasn't making a promise that we would be safe. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't saying that we would be celebrated. And he wasn't saying that things are going to turn out well. Jesus was saying, do not be afraid, because even more than a sparrow, which is funny because when you read that passage, it's always read with such seriousness. Really, I 
think when you read it in context, Jesus was making sort of a satirical joke. Because it's funny how jokes can lead to the truth, right? And so we are loved even more than a sparrow. We are loved and valued by God, and we are entrusted to bring heaven to work. Therefore, have the character to be faithful, and don't worry about the critics who will question you, because that is what peace requires. Have the integrity to live out the call and rise higher than those who will rise against you. Because that is what compassion demands. And have the fortitude to be the hands and feet of God and overcome those fears that are inside you. Because that is, the, that is what the world needs. And not because it would be easy. But because it is the right thing to do. And doing the right thing is what loving God looks like. Church, do you hear me? Not because it would be easy, but because it is the right thing. And when Jesus talked about a reward, and you heard that in the passage, didn't you? When Jesus talked about the reward, he wasn't talking about things. He wasn't talking about what you can get. He wasn't talking about any sort of gift. He was saying character is your reward. Integrity is your prize. Faithfulness is your treasure. And when you have integrity, when you have character, and when you have faithfulness, no one can take that away from you. And you become who you are created to be. And in a world where there are protests in our streets, and whether you agree with all that is happening and you are a part of it, or, or you are struggling and you are upset with it, do the right thing and be kind and empathetic, even when you're angry. And let God's peace come from you. Where there are people who are always struggling, People always struggling with loneliness and with hunger and with hopelessness and with worry. Do the right thing and be compassionate, even if you are also struggling. And let God's hope come from you. Where well, there are people who are tired. And brothers and sisters, can I say something? I'm tired. I am really, really tired. I'm tired of the divisive fight. I'm tired of all this finger pointing that people are doing to one another. You know, I'm, I'm tired of the fact that I know what people are against, but I know very little what they're for. Church, do you hear me? I'm tired. I'm tired of all the hate, all the hate people have. I'm tired of all the ugliness we see. And brothers and sisters, it is exhausting, isn't it? I'm tired. Do the right thing and be loving. Even when you are afraid and worried, even if you are tired, and let God's love come from you. See, this passage is stating something that is clear. God doesn't need to perform miracles for heaven to come to earth. Heaven can come to earth when we have the courage to be faithful, when we have the character to keep focused on love, And to not be afraid, to not be afraid of the critics and the haters, or the naysayers and the doubters, or those who will actively work against us. This passage is saying the work will be hard, and the work is hard. That the work will be hard, sacrifices must be made, relationships will be broken, but follow in the ways of Jesus anyway. Be the hands and feet of God. Not because it would be easy, but because it's the right thing to do. So brothers and sisters, do the right thing. Amen? Amen. Amen. My friends, please stand and join me in the statement of faith found in your bulletin. Please read with me. We believe in God, who has created his Others, seeking justice and resisting injustice, 
and seek out hope and peace. We believe every person, regardless of color, religion, creed, age, class, or orientation, is a child of God. We are connected because we are family. We gather because we all have something to share. We encourage one another and hold each other accountable. But most of all, we love one another. Thanks be to God.